You got a call from ESPN to say, come join us for the first time when? When did you get that 1986. call? 1986. Jeez. I was a year out of school working in Denver, uh, doing all the the cub reporter things at a, at, a, at a great TV station. Very lucky to have an on-air gig out of school. I went to see you, and it was right down the road. I'd interned there. But I had a little tape out floating around wanting to, you know, do scores on the weekends at various local stations. Yeah. And Espen somehow got a hold of the tape, and I thought I was going to get a call for Sports Center. They had, they had a high school show in mind. Mm-hmm. Called Scholastic Sports America, and I, I looked 11 years old, so Look it was appropriate. Picture. Oh my God, 11 is being generous. Look, Look at, at that sweater. That. Where's the sweater? Look at you, Fowler. Wow. wow. Look at that, dude. Damn you for finding that picture. No, I, I, uh, <laughs> that sweater is is a that is a catastrophe. What I'm wearing there. It's that all was good. the era when you know, like the Kuji sweaters and the yeah, whole right. kind of. Yes. I had a I had a. You had a whole collection? I had a, like a steamer trunk full of sweaters that looked like that. that <laughs> so Scholastic Sports America, yeah. I remember you doing that. I, I, no one said it was a good idea to do it, by the way. This is just not to get off of my life lessons, but sometimes listening to your own inner voice and, and cueing out the static of people who are telling you what you should do, yes. here's the path, is crucial. And nobody said I should go to ESPN because it was this startup thing. It was seven years old. Seven as years you know. old, yeah. yeah. We didn't have the rights to anything really back then. And a high school show was not the pathway into this business for, for a lot of people. So I, I did it because it seemed fun. It seemed like it would be a challenge. And two years later, turned down the opportunity to come out to L.A. for the job they eventually hired Chris Myers for when they, they had no L.A. presence. Mm-hmm. So they were going to put a reporter out here for the first time to cover Lakers, Dodgers, USC. and You turned pre, down pre the NFL. Showtime, Kirk Gibson, Dodge, you know, Lakers Showtime, Kirk Gibson, Dodger Off a high beat. school show. Again, they, they checked my sanity, but it just didn't, you know, something said this didn't feel right. Something said, stay in Bristol, okay. not go to L.A. I didn't say, I didn't see it felt logical. I, I, I just, hey, it just. Look, it's, it's where you finished. It's how you finished. Whether, but... whether you, I probably was too young to even meditate back then, but yeah. I figured out that it, then a month later they said, hey, well, how about college football sidelines and be a reporter for this little show called Game Day, which is a half hour long that people were not watching. And that just clicked instantly. So, I mean, none of, we wouldn't be, none of the path I took had I taken um, the conventional choice any point along the way. So, so who was the first host of Game Day? Who was hosting? Tim Brando. Tim Brando. Tim Brando. Who's with Fox now. Did, did a couple years. Then Bob right. Carpenter hosted it in 89. Um, his wife was giving birth. He left town to be with her, obviously. I was I was pulled up from, from AAA yeah. and put in that host seat. Hadn't done live hosting before. And it wasn't a disaster. So the next year... Um, when when Bob moved on, I, I was I was tabbed to host it with Lee Corso. Look at that! There we go. Oh my God! Look at you and you Lee pointing the team. camera. Yeah, we did, brother. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. And that that show, people go, how would you? How were you doing game day at that age? Well, no one wanted to do it, really. I mean, it was it was, but one of the biggest sources of pride I'll ever have is you know is just building something brick by brick. You get a very few chances in life to do that, correct? And in this business to do that, you you've done it here by sort of starting something, but but game day was was a core group of people, including Lee Corso, of course, who who were there from the start, and and built it into something. And and uh, 25 years was a great run. Uh, I don't miss the wake up call, but, but uh, when, would, but yeah, when did fun. when did they when did you first put that? When did the idea like let's go to the campuses, let's get that energy, well, it let's took go a few to the years kids. to convince them to spend the money in, in the regular season. You right. cover bowl games, but 93, Florida State, Notre Dame, one versus two in South Bend in November had everything you could want. Right. Holtz, Bowden. North, south. I mean, it was going to decide which team was going to go on and play for the championship. And we convinced them to, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. We we're out there using live with their mics. We couldn't be heard indoors in South Bend, outside of their basketball arena in the Hall of Fame where all the statues are. Yeah. And we just kind of plopped a set down on the floor and put a rope around it. And, and that was it. And so it, it kind of went okay. And then next year we started going on the road. And that's, that's obviously what, what catapulted the show was, was, differentiating from everything else, which is the, the students and the people behind us were, were members of the cast of the show. And, and you, you feel the energy sitting yeah. at home. You feel the energy, and you were such a, a terrific host and conduit, for the lack of a better phrase, yeah. to, to, to give everybody that sense sitting at home of what you were sensing and yeah. feeling at the site 
and it's intoxicating. It's intoxicating, and kids love it. Well, they were intoxicated behind us. That's true. I mean, I, I, we, we tried to say sober, but <laughs> some of the signs oh, too. Yeah. Like people, I mean, it's Sign. it's now it's now a it is now. <laughs> where's game day going? You know, now it is now part of absolutely forevermore. Well, it was organic. The landscape. That's what was cool is that you know when it when it began and and, and grew, it was organic. It, it was it sort of we we. We've got bigger and bigger crowds. Coaches begin to figure out, hey, this is an infomercial. Yes. Let's put five or 10,000 people behind them and show the world right. what our campus is like when, when a big game is here and, and use that as a recruiting tool. So, you know, motives, whether they're pure or not, it was an organic growth of the show. And I think our job was to differentiate what was different about Texas A&M from Oregon from Florida. You know, we didn't want it to be the same every week, even though there were some common ingredients. There's different cultures. There's different parts totally. of the country. And, and, and the morning of a game isn't the same in Eugene as it is in Gainesville. You know, so you want to sure. sort of capture that. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.